my dear friends, we will start this mass about seven or eight minutes late. But I appreciate your presence here to join us to bless the Almighty God. Mass is set from the chapel here at Wall to read the church there. Uh, as you can see behind or in, behind the altar is the image of our Lord and paralyzed cripple at the pool of Bethesda. We pray that the same Lord will be with you, that he may heal you, that he may heal people you care about, that he may heal people we pray for. We do all have our needs, but today the Lord will speak to those needs. And so we pray that we may open our hearts and hear what the Lord is inviting us to at this time. Our opening hymn for this Mass will be Opening him with the city of God. City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep. A new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness. I've seen a great light, the Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God, may our tears be turned into dancing, for the Lord our light and our love has turned. Denied in My dear friends, this song invites us to build a new city of God, a city where the values of our Christian upbringing are everywhere and everyone expresses and lives out those values. And in this new city, our tears will be turned into dancing because the Lord will be our light and our love. And the Lord will turn our night into day. That's our prayer for every one of you who is watching or participating at this time. We go to God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. For all those who are sick, especially those who are so critically sick, we ask your healing grace, O oh God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For those who have lost so much as a result of this virus, oh God, their peace, their future, their hard work, their sweat, we ask your mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. For those who are not sure what the future may hold for them, and are just living in total fear and blackout, we ask your grace, oh God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the Paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, so that Christ our High Priest, interceding on our behalf, may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation, and by his equality with us, Free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name. 
Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus Christ. Though you had killed him by hanging him on a tree, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things. As it is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response to the psalmist. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Bless the name, the man who takes refuge in him. I bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them. And, and from all their distress, he rescues them. Hallelujah. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man. But out of them all, the Lord delivers him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard. But no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does not accept his testimony certifies Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sends speaks the word of God and does not ration his gifts of the Spirit. The Father loves his Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. And whoever disobeys the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I want to take a moment first to appreciate the efforts that every one of you is making at this very difficult time. No one, no one can understand what you're dealing with. As an individual person or as an individual family only God understands only God knows because sure we may all be locked up we may all be without jobs we may all be without a lot of things but how this is impacting on us is personal and so only God understands what you're dealing with but I would just want to take this time to appreciate your effort in keeping me alive my effort in keeping you alive our effort in keeping each other alive what we are doing, the sacrifices we are making, we're making because we not only care for ourselves, but we care for every child of God. And so I thank you. For my reflection today, I would like us to go to the gospel. 
in, in this text, something stood out to me. That God is already focusing our minds. The Lord Jesus is already focusing our minds to something. See, we're so busy at this time with survival, with safety, you know, with just being able to get back. That we may forget a lot of things. And that's okay. Because it's part of life. When our lives are swamped by stuff, we forget the essential things. But the Lord knows the essential things. And slowly, he reminds us of those things. So in today's gospel, the Lord reminds us of the Spirit. The Lord reminds us of the Spirit. He's already beginning to turn our minds towards the Holy Spirit, the coming of Pentecost. He says, For the one whom God sends speak the, speaks the word of God. He does not ration the gift of his Spirit. That means he doesn't look and check, okay, you deserve 5%. Okay, take 5%. You deserve 1%. You take 1%. You deserve 2%. You take 2%. No, he doesn't ration the gift of his spirit. That means he gives to everyone who asks the measure according to the person's needs. Why is that? A few days ago, I quoted the book of Lamentation. It says, the mercies of God are never in short supply because he renews them every day. The power of his spirit is the same. It's never in short supply because the Spirit is able to do a trillion things in a single, in a split second. The scripture says he does not ration the gift of the Spirit on anyone, on everyone who asks him. And I, I was just thinking about how much we need the Spirit at this time. How much we need the Spirit at this time. The Lord Jesus himself, first of all, let us begin even from the creation story. Do, how much do we need the Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth? After all of this, after this, this, you know, this, this gamble with, with this, this disease, how much do we need the Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth? I remember at the creation story, and I'm sure you do remember, that the Holy Spirit, you know, was sent. The Holy Spirit sanctified all of creation and gave life to all of creation. That's his job because he is the life-giving principle. And how much do we need life right now? How much do we need that life-giving principle? Doing exactly what the Holy Son says. Turning our tears into dancing and our nights into day. That's exactly what we need. And the Lord knows that. And so the Lord is already turning our minds and our hearts to his spirit. You remember the Lord himself before he died. He made us understand what the Holy Spirit's duty and what his job was going to be in your life, in my life, in his church. So I will send you the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. That was the first title, the Advocate. Now, what will he be doing as an Advocate? He will be praying for you. He will be praying for me. He will be interceding for you. He will be interceding for me. But more than just that, he will be defending me. He will be defending you. An Advocate doesn't just plead our cause. An Advocate also makes a case for us. He defends us. And so the Holy Spirit is our defender. And the Bible tells us, God is saying here to us, that he doesn't just give us some little piece of it here, piece of that. He says, no, I don't ration that. I give it as much as you ask for it, if you need it. So I want our minds now shifting for us to begin to ask, God, give me that spirit. The Holy Spirit is also a companion says he will be with you he will be your companion he will travel with you the paraclete meaning one who is with you who travels with you who is who accompanies you so he will be your companion and don't we need that companion right now more than ever 
whether we are in our homes, whether we are just mentally making that travel on what the future is going to be, trying to scout, scout around and see where we would go with our businesses, with our lives, with our families post-coronavirus. Do we not need a companion who understands God's mind, who knows exactly what our needs will be, and who is best seated to pray for us? Because St. Paul tells us that the Spirit intercedes for us in a language that we ourselves could never imagine because he understands the mind of God. Do we not need such a companion who knows the mind of the Almighty and is able to intercede with us using words that we could never even phantom or imagine? And so Jesus is up to something here that Scripture is calling our minds already to the Holy Spirit. The Bible also calls him the helper. And I'm sure right now, if there is anything, we will show need a helper, not just for our individual lives, for our world. And God is saying to us, yes, you do have one, but you need to ask him to be there with you. You ask him to be with you. So my dear friends, without taking much time out of us, I want us thinking, following where the Lord is leading. He is already leading us to begin to focus towards Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit will do, will do for the church what was missing from the time the Lord died. Remember, it was only after Pentecost that the apostles could break, with, could break from their own self-quarantine. It was after Pentecost when the face of the earth had been renewed that was when, for the first time, the apostles were able to stand publicly and to preach in the name of Jesus and were able to witness to the power of that name. So the Lord is already tilting our minds towards Pentecost. Let us look where he is looking. Let us invite the Spirit of God to be with us, to be in us, to be around us, to lead this charge towards the end of this battle, of this fight. And I'm confident that if the Holy Spirit is leading this fight for you and for me and for the church, we could never lose. Because the Spirit, the Bible says, He is like the wind. He blows where He wills. We hear the sound. We don't have an idea where He is going and what He's doing. And not even the enemy knows that. The enemy may feel the power of the Spirit but doesn't know where he is going and what his plan is. And so let us invite the Holy Spirit of God to be our companion, to be our friend on this journey and on this final church against this disease. So always I'd like to remind you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you for the gift of this day. We know, if, even though our hearts are slow to believe in it, we know that with every passing day, we are moving closer, closer to the end of this assault. We are moving closer to the beginning of fresh things, to the beginning of new things. We ask, oh God, that you may help us focus not on what has happened in the past, but on the future that you hold in store for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray especially for people who are in critical care here in our hospital and around the world. That our good God may send his spirit, the bread of life, to bring freshness and newness and strength into their lives and into their souls and into their spirits. That there may be a turnaround right now, right here. Because God has stepped in. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our healthcare workers, our, no our doctors, our nurses, and all medical staff of different uh, functions and, and areas. We pray that our mighty God may provide them clear guidance in everything they do. That God may be with those who are spent and exhausted and refresh their strength. That God may be with those who are sick and bring healing and get them back into the fight. 
and that God may protect all those who are still healthy that they may stay in the fight. We pray that their, 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 their ministry of care and love for the sick may bring healing and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for others who are sick of other kinds of ailments, those who have heart conditions, those who are struggling with their relationships, those who are struggling with their families, those who are struggling with children, maybe with physical or mental disabilities, those who have parents who are sick and cannot be with them at this time. Pray that God, who is able to be there for us when we cannot be there for ourselves, may be there for you and may help you tailor this, this, this difficult time onto a safe shore until everything is, everything is okay and we can do our jobs ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I like to pray for the intentions that you have today. I'm sure you have concerns in your hearts right now and right here. I beg the good Lord to take them from you. I beg the good Lord to do something about your concerns, your worries, and your difficulties. That in turn, you will receive. For your problems, you will receive answers. For your fears, you will receive courage. For your pain, you will receive the soothing and the balm of the Almighty God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for governments around the world. We pray and ask that governments may submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit, who unifies us and unifies our efforts, because that is his job. He brings all of God's children together. That our leaders may listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches and to the world, and may do the bidding of the Almighty God, not theirs at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us for our needs and for the needs of the world, even as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. In bread we bring you, Lord, our bodies, labors. In wine we offer you, our spirits give. We do not ask you, Lord, who is my neighbor, that join you united none. One in the leaf, for oh, we have gladly heard your word, your holy word, and now in answer, Lord, our gifts we bring, our failing faith make whole, our failing hearts renew. Our lives belong to you, our Lord and our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, like incense, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to lot yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have passed as a result of this coronavirus, O oh God. Remember those who have died from other causes. We ask, dear God, that you may grant them the peace and rest with your son. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, dear friends, that our God loves us, let us call him Father as our Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, so we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. My dear friends, from me to you and all your families, may the peace of Christ abide with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Dear God, your children around the world desire to receive you physically, to receive of your body and of your blood, but are unable to do so at this time. And so we pray that you may bring your graces to abide with them and to be with them. That you may nourish their spiritual needs. That you may bless them with your presence. That the graces they receive every day in Holy Communion be granted to them at this time in full measure. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to remind you that tomorrow at the same time, 9 o'clock, we will be offering Mass for all our dead. We say Mass for our dead. So if you have someone you'd like to pray for, I'll invite you to join us to pray for our dead. Those we know and those we don't even know. We'll also be praying for their families at this very difficult time. Um, Sometimes it's, it's never clear how to grieve at this time. 
So this, our loved ones who have lost persons personally would need our prayers and our support. So I'd encourage you to join us tomorrow to pray for our dead and for their families. Um, behind me, as you can see, um, is a painting of our Lord and the paralyzed man at Bethesda. So I pray that the Lord who did this miracle for this man will do the same for all of you and for everyone who is sick in your family. So it's a light to end by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. And I hope you believe it because you truly are. The Lord be with you. To the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn will be Abide with Me. Abide with Me. Abide with Me. Fast falls the even side. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When all the help fast fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, who oh, abide with me. Sweep to its close. Helps out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim. Its glories pass away. Change and decay. In all around I see. O thou who changest not. Abide with me.